Would you like to learn how to paint flowers? I'll teach you how to paint a really simple flower bouquet and you can paint it in your art journal or on any paper that you have. I'm gonna make sure that I'm all set and ready. One thing that you can grab right now for today's journal is some kind of paper, whether it's a paper bag, it's cardstock, newspaper, piano music, a page from a book, anything. You're gonna use that as your background. Today's prompt is beauty in imperfection. Our paintings are going to look really different this time because we'll have a different background, which is whatever paper that you have. And also this is going to be a very, very abstract, loose painting. So we're gonna make marks today and they're gonna be imperfect marks and we're gonna see the beauty that happens with imperfection. So that's what I'm going for today. I'm gonna go along the idea of making like a floral in a vase, but everything about it is going to be spontaneous, very free, and I'm not going to get meticulous and try to get detailed or anything like that. And I'm gonna see how I can create beauty by just letting it be. And that's the challenge today. So I'm going to cut my paper so that it fits on my page like a background. So I'm just making it real easy here and using my journal with the paper sandwiched in and cutting around it using the outside as a guide. And this will make the paper a little bit bigger than the page and I can adjust it a lot easier when I open it up and see how it fits. So I just need to round the corners and just take off just a little bit. And I'll be honest, the background that you choose isn't going to make or break your painting. If yours is different, great. Let's see the variety that we can create because of what you have and what someone else has and what I have is going to be different here. It's gonna be very difficult to find this exact piece of paper and I wouldn't want you to do that. And there's nothing wrong with having a busy background piece of paper or having a plain one. And keep in mind that you don't have to paint exactly what I'm painting. You can go your own direction with this prompt and do something completely different and you don't have to even have paper if you don't want. So I've got my paper to fit exactly on my page here. Now I want to glue this paper onto my page. You can use whatever glue that you have. Remember in previous journal lessons that I talked about using mediums as glue? And if you have those, great. For this type of paper, a soft body would work or the modeling paste would work great. Today I'm using super heavy gel medium which is not as strong as the modeling paste, but it's super, super good at being a glue. And it's more like oil paints in consistency. I just wanted to show you this today, but I totally could have used what I already have. And Mod Podge works, Elmer's glue works. This is just your art journal. You're not needing to make something archival quality and last forever. So just use whatever you have for a paste. And if you don't like things on your fingers, that's totally fine. You can use a paintbrush to put it on there. Some of us are handsy and more tactile than others. And sometimes for people, it bothers them to have things on their hands. So you just go with whatever feels good to you. And then I just put the glue side down onto my page, lining up my paper so that it fits on it. I'm washing off my fingers so that I don't get any of the glue on the top of my page because I know with this shimmery stuff that if you get some of the glue on top of the shimmer, then it will take out the shimmer and I don't want it to do that. So I'm just making sure that no glue is going to interfere with the texture of my page. So I'm just gonna line things up here. And the good thing is that I don't have to wait for things to dry to really start painting, even though this medium will actually dry pretty quick. But I just want to make sure that it's pushed down in the middle, on the sides, so that it will adhere really well. 
and stay put. So if you are ever wanting a unique background in your painting, you are welcome to use paper. You can paint on paper with acrylics. I have found that the thicker the paper, the better, and the more layers, the better, because the sturdier the surface, the less buckling will happen. So I'm gonna grab some colors here. I've got my Thalo Cyan Blue on my palette. Now I want you to think of some colors that you might want for your flower painting. What is your favorite color? Purple flowers will work, red flowers will work, yellow flowers will work, white flowers will work. So think about a color that you love. Now the other route is that you can use a color that you don't normally use. Maybe a color you don't think is beautiful, such as brown, for me personally. Or you can just use a color that you spontaneously mix and see what it creates. So I have blue, black, and I have white on my palette. And I'm thinking of a vase shape, but when I add the white to my flat brush here, I'm thinking that I'm going to just paint a vase that's imperfect. Or maybe not that it's imperfect, it's just not filled in all the way. So I've got the side of my vase and then I just push the paint over and leave it like that. Then on the right side I have this gray color and I just continue that same shape that I had on the left side and move that color over. And that's it. I let some of the gold show through. I don't try to get realistic with it. Now I'm going to grab some blue and some black, which would work, but I want to have a little bit of purple in here. So I'm going to grab my purple. So I'm just checking the color and what it's going to be on my palette. And I'm going to mix a little bit of this color into the blue to get an indigo color. That's the color that came to my mind for this. So now notice I'm just making blobs. Okay, so this is forcing me to be imperfect here. I'm just going in a swirly motion. These blobs could definitely be flowers, but look, I'm just gonna pull up. I can pull to the side. Now, do these blobs look like flowers? Mm -mm. Nope, now I'm gonna just grab some of this paint in. But look, you don't have to have perfection to make this a beautiful painting. I can have a blob here, I can have a blob there. I can pull up and have some weird, you know, lines going in different directions, smudges. I can have lines like this. Oh, I can put a blob right there, like away from the, all of it. And look, I can still find beauty in this painting. There's nothing perfect about this. The brush strokes aren't perfect. The blobs aren't perfect. I just made it look like a flower because I have a vase. And oh look, I can even use the same color and pull down and make some stems. And I pull down into the vase and it makes it look like it's transparent. I wasn't slow and methodical. I didn't put a lot of thought into it. I just carried my brush and pushed my brush around and scribbled. Now there's nothing wrong with leaving it just like this, but I'm going to make another color. And I have a little bit of that color that I just used on my brush and mixing just a little bit of green with it and it makes this lighter color. And I'm going to scribble, maybe dot a little bit. Nothing perfect about this, I'm not slowly methodically doing this, I'm just kind of, oh, okay, I wanna like cover up that area, wanna add a little bit of this color right here. Notice how it's starting to give it dimension because it's a lighter color. And then I'll just drag some of that color down. I can splatter, I can add different textures, I can grab a pencil and scribble all over this. The point today is to do what you can to loosen up to allow yourself to play, to let go of it having to look a certain way, to just randomly do some things and then find beauty in it. In a way, 
It's finding beauty in the progress. It's finding beauty in the mistakes. It's finding beauty in the ugly stage of our paintings. It's finding beauty in our unfinished paintings. It's finding beauty in our differences. And only then when we see the imperfections as beautiful, can we create beauty with imperfection. This takes acceptance. And if you can find acceptance in the imperfectness of life and yourself, then you will find more beauty in yourself and life. And that's what I hope for you today. So I'm done. This is it. So I'm going to tell myself I'm done right now. And yes, it's in its early stages. And I say that because it could morph into something completely different than what it is right now. If I kept working on it. But this is going to help me let go of this need or desire to just keep reworking it and trying to make it into something realistic. I'm going to let go of its imperfectness and take a breath and let it be what it is. So that's why we're doing this quickly today and that we just did blobs and lines and scrapes and then we're done. And the challenge is to find beauty in what we just created. Look at yours and find the beauty in it. Look at mine and find the beauty in it. Try not to compare yours and mine in a negative way. Instead, try to find each individual's unique beauty. Let yours be what it is or what it came to be and let mine be what it is. So in the journal part, you can write your feelings about this painting process, maybe your struggles or what you liked about it. You can write quotes, you can make lists, maybe focusing on the things that are imperfect in your life that you need to work on finding beauty in. Whatever you wanna do, do that here. I'm so proud of you for showing up today and taking on this challenge. You are amazing, my friend, and I look forward to another day of painting with you. Thank you for painting along with me. If you love painting in an art journal, there is an art journal course that I have for my great art members, and you can learn how to paint other flowers in the art journal and all kinds of different things on all these art journal pages. So go ahead and check that out. I'll put a link down in the description and also as a comment. Painting in an art journal can give you a lot of great practice. If you wanna paint on a canvas and make art for your own home, I am teaching how to paint more floral paintings this month. I also have lots of other lessons. You can watch them right over here and you can choose whichever ones you wanna do with me. I'll see you in my next video.